This is a video of Debian Wheezy booting up on a Gateway Solo 3100 Pentium 2 366 laptop with 96 megabytes of RAM and a 30 gig hard drive. Also, an SMC 2335W Atheros based 802.11b card, which supports WPA and subsequently WPA2 encryption via the WPA supplicant package. I'm going to just start it up here. So far, things that I've had to do to this were replace the old and crufty and sounding like rocks 25mm fan, which is supposed to cool Pentium 2. You can see everything seems to be working okay. I'm going to boot up into Linux 3.16. It's the latest kernel that you can get in back ports. And subsequently, I believe that's the last kernel that they're going to release for Wheezy backports, if I'm not mistaken. Um, well, for the moment, at the very least. There's a couple messages here about not being able to find the sound. Uses the uh, Magigraph 256AV's uh, audio daughter chipset or sister chipset. This is based off of a Neomagic Magic Graph 256 AV graphics chipset, just like the IBM ThinkPad 380XD, released around the same time-ish. Uses PC66 RAM, has 32 megs soldered on board, and you have one sodium slot for a second stick of 64 megs at the very on the most supposedly however i have stuck a 128 meg stick that was a little too long to fit in into the slot without being able to close the cover and it works just fine okay as you can see we are now at the login prompt i'm going to place my phone down here so i can log in boom keyboard is very very nice on this thing um on and there we go now we have some informative things right there the Wi-Fi card has a 2 megabit signal at 100% to the access point down here it runs at 366 meg uh, megahertz but it registers as 0 0.4 gigahertz on the uh, thing there I'm not sure why that is my IP address on the network because DHCP, I want to know that. And you can see there, I have 88 megs available to me, of which 47% is used, I guess, or free or something along those lines. And I've been up for one minute. The CPU temperature is rising. When it gets up to 60 degrees Celsius, the fan will turn back on, and it does not turn back off until the temperature has lowered it to a specific point um, using the 686 PAE kernel and all of that other nice stuff there. This little informative dialog bar at the bottom is called Biobu, B Y O B U, and it used to use screen as a back end but now uses Tmux as its back end. Okay, I'm going to place this down here and I'm going to do get install. password we're going to install screen fetch there it goes it focused yes Yep, there we go.
Okay. Let's see down here so I can type. Takes a bit. Here we go. It works. Yeah, so using uh, 47% or 43% of the RAM, that's what that indicator is down there. 43% of 87 megs or 88 megs. You know, that says 88, that says 87. Oh well, it works. Uh, things to happen in the future for this is this is probably going to get upgraded to Dev 1 when that goes stable, or probably just as a development. Uh, so I'm probably going to try that out. With that, we shall see what happens, I guess. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this as long as I can, because this is a very nice laptop. It's very boxy in how it is, and it's got a pretty nice keyboard. Uh, aside from the fan and redoing some thermal compound in certain spots, it, I really haven't had to do too much other work to it. Uh, something else I'm probably going to have to do is I definitely have to clean the screen because it's still wiped down from when I picked this up at the thrift shop. And the only reason I picked this up was because it came with its power adapter. If it did not come with a power adapter, I was not buying it, especially if it did not power up. In this case, it did power up. It booted into Windows 98 on a 20 gig hard drive. But get this, it had a 2 gig FAT16 partition onto which Windows 98 SE was installed. Interestingly enough, I don't think that whoever put that hard drive in there had any idea of what they were doing. That's all I have to say about that. Um, yeah, it's it is 11B. I've got a connection. Well, it's one megabit now because it's in low power standby. But I do have a connection nonetheless. So if I wanted to, for instance. Pop in SSH to the Ultra 10. Pop in my password. And do screen touch there. Oh, hello. I now have a sort of mobile box for that. The only problem is, is that the battery is dead and it needs to be repacked or I need to find a replacement for it. If I will ever find a replacement for it. Or some other means of powering this as a mobile device or mobile unit. It's very nice though. For a Pentium 2 laptop, it's, it's nice. It's quite thin for its age. This uh, came out around 1998-1999. And it's pretty good. 800 by 600 panel. It looks to be TFT. It doesn't seem to be passive matrix in any sort. So this was obviously pretty expensive, I would say. And what can I say? It works. Yeah, see, now that I have a, an SSH connection going, it's doing the full 11 megabits. And with this running at 11 megabits, it does not seem to bring down the network speed at all over Wi-Fi with this connected. So... I have heard in the past that with certain access points this can happen, however, with the current one that I have up here, which is a Linksys E1200 running Tomato, which I'm, I've been trying out for more or less of a week, and have recently switched from having two separate access points to having one single access point SSID across the two, with the same encryption, same wireless settings, all that sort of stuff. Everything seems to be hunky-dory. And the other one upstairs is no longer my tried and true uh, any, uh, no, I'm missing any, uh, WNR2000 uh, Netgear router that I was using as a wireless access point with DDWirt. And I have my uh, D Link DAR825 revision A1 Ubicom piece of crap that can't do IPv6. <laughs> so that's that. Someone has just flushed the toilet. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, well, that's the end of this video. As you can see, it works. It works perfectly.
and there's the Ultra 10, which, I'm only going to say this as a sneak peek, may or may not be getting a second Ultra 10 brother to sit on top of it, or sit beside it, or sit someplace else. But, I have a plan. <laughs> and I'm trying to carry out this plan best I can with the money I have. Or the money I'm getting, at the very least. We shall see. Until then, I wish all of you a happy 4th of July, tomorrow, the 4th. And, hopefully, no one gets hurt, uh, you know, messing around with fireworks. And, hopefully, that everybody that watches this video has at least enough common sense to... Ooh. We seem to have reached 60 degrees Celsius. But, hopefully, everybody watching this video has the common sense to uh, practice the safe use of fireworks or is around a licensed and trusted pyrotechnic before you set any fireworks off. With that, I bid thee adieu. Have a good one, guys. Have a great fourth for those of my <coughs> for, for those of my viewers in uh, the United States. Happy belated Canada Day to uh, all you uh, Canadians up north and. Uh, I don't know what other holidays are going on, honestly. So, I'm going to cut it short there. I will see you next time. Or, you'll see me next time. Or not.